few TV show formats can offer the unique benefits of the mockumentary. From quick glances to the camera, to talking heads, to its very specific style of camera movement, there are several aspects that have become staples of the mockumentary format. But what is it about the mockumentary and its stylistic choices that draw such huge audiences to them? Often, comedy is driven by what sentiments audiences might find relatable. It's never too early for ice cream, Jim. But it doesn't always make sense for characters to be relatable. So sometimes simply having a character be candid and realistic can be enough to have viewers form a connection with them. The Talking Head style interviews are of course a staple of the mockumentary. They are glimpses into characters' minds, a setting both for humor. I am fast. To give you a reference point, I'm somewhere between a snake and a mongoose and for sincerity. There's a lot of beauty in ordinary things. Isn't that kind of the point? I'll touch on that humor aspect later, but for now, let's focus on sincerity, the connection that the mockumentary can offer. It can also tell us which characters we're meant to connect with most. For example, as pointed out by Jesse Tribble in his video essay, Filming the Office. Every character looks slightly past the frame, except Jim. He looks at us, which makes him relatable. And from a logistical perspective, Talking Heads can of course offer a way of helping audiences understand plot points. Today I got up, I stepped onto the grill and I clamped down on my foot. Or character relationships. Leslie? No. And it offers a realness, often through characters stumbling over words or getting distracted based on their emotional state. All right, then it's a date. I'm sorry, what was the question? Additionally, the format is going to inherently make viewers feel like they're witnessing something private and sincere, and that realism certainly makes it easier to connect to the characters portrayed. As simple as it may seem, humor is a big part of what makes the mockumentary such a loved format. In most comedy show mockumentaries, it allows for a lot of improvisation from actors. It's, it's like three people, it's like you're shooting a documentary, so you're living these real scenes like you would on a stage in an improv theater, you know? The camera work is also often a source of humor. Things like zoom-ins, messy camera work, or filming when people aren't aware. Do you think they can hear us? Not if we turn these dials all the way down. Now they can't hear us at all. Are among the possibilities for comedic devices. The mockumentary can also create a stark contrast between crazy, out-of-control characters and the more sane ones. Isn't he the best? Gene was far from the best. As the characters more centered around comedic relief go about their insanity... The fire's shooting at us! The more sane, everyman-like characters can create a comedic contrast. Look, I haven't found the right girl. When I do, I will ask her out. Has anyone in this family ever even seen a chicken? Shows can also comedically insert information that the audience couldn't receive through any other format. You're the chicklet, not me! Unfortunately, in Mexican culture, this was a much more inflammatory gesture. One of the reasons that reality TV is disliked by many is how the dialogue can feel boring, cringy, or clearly scripted. The mockumentary offers the appeal of reality TV through its format, but it's made by really talented writers and actors, allowing for better dialogue and a structured plot. We get all the good parts of reality TV, format-wise, without the parts most don't like. As interesting and dynamic as the mockumentary is capable of being, it does have some common pitfalls. Often, it relies on simplistic comedic devices that can sometimes get a little old. One of the big ones here is characters contradicting themselves or each other. I thought you're not supposed to wear white to a wedding. I know, but there was an emergency. I look really good in white. This is often done quite well. I love all my children equally. I don't care for Joe. But because it's done so much... Well, I hope you're still committed because I'm pregnant. It can verge on predictability. Community, a show that loves to give nods at tropes, touches on how common this is in a scene of one of their rare documentary-style episodes. Because I don't care and I'm not gonna let them think that I care. And don't you dare intercut this with footage of me freaking out! A 
Additionally, as noted by this perhaps overly critical Vice article, committing to the idea of the mockumentary can often be a promise of perfect realism. But an obsession with adhering to reality has the possibility of limiting shows and movies in ways that other pieces of media just aren't limited. Of course, not all works fall victim to these restraints. In the 2014 mockumentary, What We Do in the Shadows, realism isn't really a factor. After all, it's a film about vampires. When you get three vampires in a flat, obviously there's going to be a lot of tension. Similarly, Arrested Development doesn't find itself limited by the restraints of reality. Though the actual subject matter, a rich family losing money, is completely believable, the show doesn't go to detrimental lengths in order to make it feel completely authentic. The characters, with maybe the exception of Michael, are pretty much caricatures. Everything I do is so dramatic and flamboyant, it just makes me want to set myself on fire. And the actual events that go down are also very often unrealistic, but it's still great. If the mockumentary format can continue to offer the benefits I've mentioned, we'll likely continue to love it. And currently that seems to be happening. Last year's list of mockumentaries released was pretty long. When we watch mockumentaries, we're generally looking for some specific aspects. We're looking for emotional honesty from the characters, and sincerity, yet at the same time, humor. And as I've probably said in all my videos, relatability. If these traits seem like they apply everywhere, not just to mockumentaries, it's because they do. Ultimately, the mockumentary is in many ways a reflection of what we want to see in all genres of the TV and movies that we watch. Thanks so much for watching, let me know in the comments your thoughts on mockumentaries and any requests for future videos.